can't convert, but I wish I could. Amazing. Why? Because... What does that mean? Because <laughs> when you convert, you show how motivated you are, how much you want to be part of the Jewish people. I, I was just born Jewish. <laughs> it's not the same. It's not a choice. There's the value of, of, of being born Jewish, of course. But there's a value for choosing. There's uh, many Midrashim speak about how uh, precious the convert is to Hashem. But the uh, Jewish uh, also special because they have a covenant with God. For sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. But uh, I think there's, there's a Midrash Tanhuma. It says that like there's a shepherd that's guarding his flock mm. of sheep. And he t- takes care of them, gives them food, takes them uh, water, you know, he takes them where they need, you know, puts them uh, at night where they're protected. And uh, this is every day. He takes care of his flock. That's what he does. They grow up, they give birth, they, they you know, they produce wool, they produce milk, whatever it is. And, um, and then he notices one day that uh, another sheep comes. And he joins his flock. And the sheep comes together with his sheep and joins. And, and the, the shepherd says, wow, I didn't take care of him. I didn't uh, give him food, water. But he comes, he joins my flock. How precious is this, is this special sheep that's joining? Uh, more precious than, than, than uh, you know, the regular... Uh, the regular sheep. And so this is one reason why it says that Shem loves the converts so much because, you know, they didn't have to become Jewish. They didn't. Uh, they didn't. They they chose to. And uh, uh, you know, the Jewish people. We, Hashem took us out of Egypt. Hashem took us. Uh, you know, took care of us through uh, thousands of years of history. Um, so of course, like you said, we have a covenant. We have a special relationship. But the convert is a special, special uh, relationship. Bezrat Hashem. Okay, so as you can see, what we're doing this morning, um, we've been studying the Sidur. The Sidur is <laughs> always a debate. What's the most important book in Judaism? What would you say is the most important book for the Jewish people? You'd say the Torah. You'd say the Torah. What's the... Um, my answer is usually is the Talmud. The Talmud is, includes the Torah, but uh, it's uh, much more from the rabbis. Uh, Good direction. It and it develops. It, everything written in the Torah and the Tanakh was taken and by, uh, developed by the Jewish people, by the sages throughout the, the years, especially during during and after the Second Temple period. That's when we have the Talmud from. And uh, the Mishnah and the Talmud. So that's a very central book in Judaism too. But there's a third answer that uh, I think is a good one too. And that's the Sidur. (laughs) Because the Sidur is... is, uh, It's your lines in a play. You know, a play, you get Shakespeare, right? You get some kind of a... a, And you have actors... Yeah, script. It's your script. What do you, what do you each say? What do, what do you know? So we tell him what to say. <laughs> we wait for him to respond. But we have the what we're supposed to say to Hashem. So let's open up our sidurim. We're going through the uh, morning blessings. We've uh, just spoke a little bit about the talit and the tefillin. And we started with the last week, uh, we did the cover, the Matovo Alecha Yaakov, which is uh, next week's parsha. Korach, Chukat, Balak, two weeks, sorry. Um, and we uh, actually covered Adon Olam. A beautiful poem on page uh, 30, we did last time. We explained how it speaks of the um, fundamentals of our faith. And um, we're ready for the next one. The next one is Yigdal, page 34. Page 34 and 35 in this uh, beautiful translation of the Sidur. 
Do you know the tune? Michael, you know the tune? No. Ah. There's a few tunes, of course. In the Sephardi communities, they sing, Yigdal Elohim Chai Ve'yishtabach Nimtza Ve'net Er Metziuto Echad Ve'en Yachid Ke'yichudo Ne'la Ve'gam Etzo Ve'achduto The Ashkenazi tune you might have heard also. I'll start from the beginning one more time. Page 35 at the top. Yigdal Elohim Chai Ve'yihishtahabach Nimta ve'ehenet El metzirto Echad ve'en yachid Ki yichudo Ve'am v'gam metzof Ve'achduto In some synagogues, that ring a bell? Anybody heard that before? Some synagogues, they recite this every Shabbat. Either after Shacharit or after Musaf, and sometimes the children sing it. So it's a uh, it's a very popular uh, tune. But as you can see, it's in the Sidur for every day. Every day when you wake up in the morning, you don't have to sing it, but the custom is to recite it. Why do we recite this poem? What is this poem? Who wrote this poem? Do you know anything about this poem? So, um, this poem was created by Rabbi Shlomo Ibn Gavirol. Um, I believe it was, it was uh, penned by Rabbi Shlomo Ibn Gavirol. And he was uh, a mystic in... Excuse me one second... Not sure who made it, who made this poem up. Ah, could be that it was Rabbi Lazar Kalir. Maybe it was even earlier. Anyways, whoever made it up, the theme is if you count the if you count the verses, it goes all the way on page thirty six, thirty seven, all the way till the end. How many? How many verses are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 is an important number. Why? Because corresponds with the 13 principles. 13 principles, exactly. It corresponds with the 13 principles of faith. What are the 13 principles of faith? Uh, Hashem is one. Okay. I believe in Hashem. I don't believe in all of us. Yeah. Uh, you can find them in your Siddur as well. At the end of Shacharit, every day, there's a custom that some people recite the 13 principles of faith again in a different formulation. If you look up to page... Good morning, Ariel. Manishma. Bochim Hashavim. Do you know what that means? Lashuv. It's to come back. Welcome to those who came, come back. Open up to page 274. The same book, page 274. Keep your finger open on both, both page 34 and 274. As you can see, there's a list here of the 13 principles of faith. Where does this come from? You see that? The 13 yeah. principles? 13, uh, I believe with perfect faith. I believe with perfect faith. I believe with perfect faith. And uh, this poem was made up based on the 13 principles of faith. Where does it come from? Who wrote the 13 principles of faith? The Rambam. Excellent. Who is the Rambam? He's the Rabbi Maimonides. Right. From, uh, he was born in Egypt, right? If he, if he was from Spain. Actually, he Spain. Egypt, and and he, he lived, lived in Egypt. Egypt. He ended up in Egypt, yeah. Big rabbi and big also doctor. That's right, yeah. that's right. That's right, that's right. Very good. Very good. So in his commentary on the Mishnah, he wrote a commentary on the Mishnah before he wrote his big magnum opus called the Mishnah Torah, the uh, Yad Chazaka. He wrote a commentary on the Mishnah. The Mishnah, I just said before, it's the most important book in the, the Talmud, includes the Mishnah. 
So this, in his commentary on the, the book of Sanhedrin, the Masechet, called Masechet Sanhedrin, there's a chapter which talks about all those who have a portion of the world to come. It starts off with, these are the people who don't have a portion of the world to come. And he mentions the, the heretics, people who don't believe. And Maimonides said to himself, well, there's never anywhere a list. What are the basic principles of belief? It's such a good question, you know. It doesn't appear anywhere in the Talmud explicitly. What are the lists of beliefs? Do you find that in the Chumash? In the, the old Tanakh? Is there anywhere? You must believe in Jesus? Chas v'chalila. Does it say you must not believe? There's no list of beliefs. To this day, there are some people who, who say that there's no list. The Rambam was very creative, creating this list. And his list became very, very accepted. So much so that we say it every day and we sing it, maybe even twice every morning. But it's not... Uh, this list is not, uh, doesn't have any clear source. Uh, as you're going to, as we'll see, there's basic principles, which, um, which, are, which are fundamental to Judaism. Some people say that Judaism is more a religion of action, not of faith. Is, okay, it does say, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elkeinu, Hashem Echad. So there, God, is, God exists and God is one. That's pretty basic. But all these others, where did you get to 13 from? Shema Yisrael, Hashem, Kino, Hashem, Echad. Maybe two principles. God exists and God is one. So, there were other rabbis who disagreed with the Rambam. Yes. The most famous? You know anybody, Rabbi, who disagreed with the Rambam's list of 13? Arizal. Arizal. He was against reciting the Yigdal. That's what it says in the footnote here, that the Ariza was against reciting it. But uh, it's not that he was against the actual uh, fundamentals of faith. It's unclear exactly why he, did, why he um, didn't want people to say it. Uh, go ahead. Some people, I don't know, some found a little bit like Christian, Christian-like, like since the Christians have doctrines and... Some say this uh-huh, like uh-huh. doctrines. Right. The whole idea of having a doctrine is foreign to Judaism. I hear that. I hear but, that. But, but was this maybe also like this was because of the, the situation with the Christians, like you know, the oppression, and that, that that's why he thought like hey, we have to make a, a principles for the Jews not getting lost with all those I believe you're right. I believe so. and it's not only the Christians. The Rambam actually lived most of his life in Muslim countries, and there were the Muslims that uh, that uh, he had to defend the faith against and clarify how we are different from the Muslim beliefs, how we're different from the Christian beliefs. So many people explain that this is where it comes from. This is his idea that we have to have this list. Um, but famously, there was a there was a rabbi who lived just after the Rambam. His name was Rav Yosef Albo. He was a uh, philosopher. He wrote a book called The Book of Fundamentals of Faith, Sefer Ha'ikarim, The Fundamentals, in which he, the whole book is about this, these 13 principles. And he says the Rambam got it wrong. Not that the fundamentals are wrong. <laughs> the actual belief is true. But he said instead of 13, we should make it shorter to three. Only three basic core fundamental beliefs and all the rest are like branches from the tree. So really they're 13, but they're divided into three groups, three categories. So there's a, a, whole, um, it's a whole long uh, literature about the fundamentals of faith. We're not going to study all that now. We actually did some a couple months ago. We, we went through all the fundamentals of faith. Um, I don't think any, maybe Ariel was there, I don't know. but uh, You were, okay. So we're, now we're learning the Siddur. So, but I'm just showing you what is the Yigdal. It's a, it's a poem based on the Rambam's 13 Fundamentals of Faith. And um, obviously, if you, uh, you know, based on the debate of how to define the 13 and should you talk about 13 or 3, 
that's going to change whether or not you want to have the, this poem in your service, whether you recite this after the prayers on page 274. You can see it's the, the last part of Shacharit. The next page is Mincha. Page 278 is already Mincha. So the last part is the 13 fundamentals of faith. And right now we're doing the beginning of the, of the Shacharit prayer, page 30, 34. So at the beginning and end, we have this, these fundamentals of faith. Yes? No question, because I forgot, but as a fan of the recited people principles, right? After... It's hard to say. Um, Over, not that I know of. There is a tradition that once upon a time we used to recite the Ten Commandments every day. That appears the page before in this Siddur. This Siddur has the, the Ten Commandments on page 272, you can see. But, uh, and that, we definitely have a tradition that the Jews used to do that, and then they stopped it. Uh, but the 13 fundamentals of faith, it can't be a very old tradition, because the Rambam made up the list. And he lived only 800 years ago. In Judaism, that's early. That's, you know, 800 years, that's nothing. For something to really be uh, a, an ancient tradition, we're talking about the Talmud. The Talmud and the sages, which is 2,000 years, not 800 years. I feel yeah, maybe, maybe there are similar poems that many, many tefillot that recite. Some of them are, are very ancient, but this uh, thirteen principles is not that ancient. No, no, this is so. Back to let's go back to Yigdal, and we'll uh, we'll, we'll read through it, and then we'll uh, point out which one. Uh, keep your fingers <laughs> here, and you'll be able to see which one is which. We'll go through and see what are the fundamentals of faith. Um, and uh, 1 through 13. If you look on page 35, underneath the line, in the comments, he discusses this issue. He discusses the issue of, you know, why do we not recite the, the Yigdal, according to the Ariza? If you look at the bottom of page 35, he says, parenthetically, Rabbi Tzvi Yehuda, this is the uh, Rabbi Tzvi Yehuda Cohen Cook, speculated that Ari's criticism was directed at public recital, recital of the hymn Yigdal for the same reason the sages of old abolished the custom of reciting the Ten Commandments in public because of the grievance of the sectarians. That is, those Jews who would have reduced Judaism to the Decalogue to the exclusion of the other precepts. In other words, we don't say the Ten Commandments every day in publicly because primarily the Christians they started to say, there's not 613, there's only 10. And so we de-emphasized the Ten Commandments. Rav Tzuyuda says, maybe the same thing here with the principles. Oh, you're going to say only these 13? Oh, everything else is not important? So we're very wary of, of the misinterpretation. But the truth is, if you look uh, on the next page, page 34, underneath the line, he tells a story. Rav Isaac Hutner, once illustrated by way of a parable, why most of the medieval authorities did not attempt to reduce Judaism to principles. And then we go switch, turn over the page and he, to hear the parable. On page 37, underneath the line, he says a beautiful parable. Page 37, okay, um, Ariel and, and uh, Israel, turn to page 37, follow along with me underneath the line. He says, if somebody's healthy, when one is healthy, no. you read it for us, uh, Michal? Page 37, under the line. Will you read it, please, uh, in English? When one is healthy? When one is healthy, one doesn't feel a difference between one of them and another. Take, for example, the finger and the heart. Though one knows the difference between them, and that the heart is both tighter than the finger. Now, now you go to page 36. No, this in a healthy state, one doesn't feel the difference, but if a chef forbid, one becomes, becomes ill and is forced to decide between them, then one knows which must be sacrificed for the other. So in a healthy state, one doesn't pay much attention. It should be healthy, it's a mistake, it should be, there's an L missing. In a healthy state... In a healthy state, one doesn't pay much attention to Ekare Ha'emuna, the articles of faith. In a healthy state, one does not feel the difference between commandments. And if one does, then it's a sign that one is sick to one's soul. 
For that reason, most of our learning did not compose books in the field of Ikare Ha'enuma. Right, that's why we don't spend, uh, here we are, a book, uh, we're, we're studying now, the course is called Fundamentals of Judaism. We don't go, uh, usually, we don't just go through the list and talk about the 13 fundamentals of the faith. We teach Judaism. Judaism is alive. It has fingers, it has a heart. Obviously, there's some parts that are more important than others, but more fundamental, and the heart is a central, you know, uh, central organ. And the fig, but you want to be a complete person. You want to have a finger too. So we learn all of Judaism. And uh, so there's not so much emphasis on the 13 principles because we're teaching you Judaism. But here we are. It's part of our Siddur. We do uh, uh, recite it every morning in the beginning of Shacharit. So let's just go through it right now and um, we'll continue to learn about the Siddur um, after, after Yigdal. Okay, so let's go back now to page 34. And we'll read one by one. Okay? So, uh, Steve, uh, will you please read for us the first one? Great. Great as the living God at first. He exists, and his existence is beyond us. Okay, so fundamental number one is the existence of God. Ariel, you do the second one. He is one, and there is no unity like this. Unfathomable, his one is infinite. Book it off. Yeah, okay, so what's this principle? Ariel, summarize. It's the uh, second one. In the and what is it? Uh, that he's one. He one. Hashem is one. That's right. Like we said, yeah. we covered the two. God exists and God is one, unified. Good. Number three, uh, Israel. Can you read the, the third? He has on page thirty-four. We're oh, looking at page thirty-four, the third paragraph. Okay, so what's the third principle? Because there's no form, no body. Right, right. This, for example, was debated. Believe it or not, some, some rabbis felt that uh, when the Torah says that God uses outstretched arm or uh, the wings, right? He, maybe uh, there is some... There is, maybe... Uh, and to us it's very strange today. We're so used to this idea that Rama presented that, we, that God has no body. But um, it wasn't always like that. But anyways, God is no body. That's principle number three. Number four. Almost we're at the top of page 36, please. We're reading through the Yigadal, and then we'll sing the whole thing, maybe. He, he pre preceded all that was created. He was first. There was no beginning to his beginning. <laughs> no beginning to his beginning. Wow. This is the principle that God is uh, eternal. Um, back, that he is the first, the first being before creation even, he existed. Okay, we're not going to get into the long uh, philosophical uh, the explanations of each. Let's keep going. Next one. Behold, he is master of the universe, and every creature shows his greatness and majesty. So, uh, this is number five, right? So, if you... Uh, what is that? What is that... Uh, so what's the essence of this principle? So if you look in page 274, in number 5, he says, I believe with perfect faith that the Creator, blessed be His name, is the only one to whom it is proper to pray, and that it is improper to pray to anyone else. Very interesting principle, that we pray only to God, that God is the King. God is the King. He is uh, ultimate uh, power over us. And that's why he says here, um, he's master of the universe. Okay, Michal, continue. The rich flow, number six. The rich flow of his prophecy he gave to his special people in whom he glorified. Okay, so what's the principle number six? Principle six, I believe the perfect faith of all the rest of the prophets have to. In other words, the principle is prophecy. Some people say this is really the most important principle. Uh, 
fundamental faith of Judaism, prophecy. Without prophecy, we wouldn't know what he wants. We wouldn't have any covenant between Hashem and the Jewish people. The fact that he came to us and spoke to us and told us, this is what I want from you, this is a very basic, but, uh, yeah. But it's also fundamental, right, in the sense like, you see like in the modern academic, you try to approach the, 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 the Torah from an yeah, academic perspective. Yeah. And then, and then you, you, I would say you go off of the, the defined message, because you don't right. believe it's a defined, but just some, some pseudo writer, and it's probably that's right. then, then you can, yeah. Absolutely, no, yeah. this is a big one. This is, goes to the heart of how we treat Torah, how we relate to the Torah as the word of God versus some, some author sometime yes. made it up, uh, yes. maybe some group of people. <laughs> okay, excuse me for just a minute. Uh, but I'd like you to keep, keep going through the, the poem, comparing it to page 274, making sure you have a clear definition of what the principles are. I'll be back in just five minutes. I have to step out for a minute. So read through to the end of 13. Sorry, and have some cake. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Shabbat leftovers. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I was thinking like, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> and then he gave the, yeah, Bukh Hashem, Hashem gave the links to I seen you here before. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh. Ah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm uh, staying in a full hour now. Oh, wow, wow. So, you know, visit, kind of. Uh, what I recently said, I come for the day class first. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, that's good. Because he said, I stay in Rufa. He said, I don't know how. Rufa is far away. Yeah, he said, I don't know how, how. Am I going to manage? So, just uh, try it first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Good. Right. For now, maybe by train, how long it takes by train? I talk about this about this morning, uh, the, the jam is uh, very bad. It's uh, about two hours plus. You try wow. Like, no, take your bus. But uh, there is no train in Amman? No, we have full of There is no train. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> wow. The only is uh, without jam, I think one and a half hours. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. I took the, the, the earliest bus, so 5.30 I came out. I reached here about something. Wow. Wow. Okay. 
So we are still looking for apartment here. Mm -hmm. uh, we are still looking for apartment here. We are still looking for apartment Sometimes what? Sometimes by train. Sometimes I have cross. But I want move close here. I don't want move. Yeah, I'm not it. I mean, by I I don't know. By. Your country, your country. Yeah, not easy. We. I don't know where I'm gonna go back. So just yeah. leave it for us. <laughs> wow, you. Oh, no easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Started across to uh, moving back to Israel, mm -hmm. which is different from in Arle. Some of the fellows in Arle. Arle, to refer either to some to a Jew, was born in Hosta Arabs, Hosta Arabs in diaspora, and comes to live in Israel and become citizen. And this is Aliyah. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's a separate uh, category where somebody who was born in country, uh, left the Croatia 14, lived in the uh, diaspora for at least seven years. His parents do not work in any Israeli governmental uh, organizations or institutions. Mm -hmm. They come back as a Roshad Hazer Khatim and they get uh, the benefits in all these things. Similar to Nadeh, but they were born in Israel, were born in Israel, and all these things. Who is like La Hamish Dakot? Anglo ya ma. Bu anak tu lontin da pom. Ma. Kian data anak tu lontin meratora data soal ma. Ma hua. Ma ke ma ma hua ke ma hua orse ke. Anglo ya aku lay yes telefon. Telefon telefon aku lay isya aku mencari lamber. Yes tu ada pas kasih kasih. Kasih kan. Kita terkasih sih anak tu. 